Hi guys, as you can see, uh, here's our uh, parts. The, uh, these are the 39.1 detail inserts that go into the, uh, the track covers. Um, these are ideal for resin printing. They're small, um, they're difficult to sand due to uh, the small uh, in parts here. The, um, so we just want to go over the only thing I've done so far is insert both of them into the build area and to flatten them by this bottom face. The reason I've done that is um, with resin printing it's often better not to stand straight uh, with your prints. Uh, having a, a completely vertical piece um, because you reduce your printing time with uh, a more horizontal piece. However, we don't want um, we don't want the uh, support structures all all over one side. Uh, so what we're going to do here is go through the supports and and look at uh, how I go around orientating them, uh, especially for parts like these. So the first thing I do. I'll make sure I've got both parts selected because most of the settings here, especially for identical parts, you want to do on both pieces. And I'll I'll just move it off the build plate by about three millimeters. This gives Tata space for um, support structures to go underneath that first face. Now, not you don't always need it because these parts. Uh, can be hidden or where it, where it, where you connect, but when your resin printer prints, it will not fully cure um, the part. So when you go to scrape these bits off, uh, your your blade may make some small dents and impacts in that. So to remove that chance, I always move the parts off of the build plate uh, before adding supports. We then go into the support settings. Now, I, for a part this big, I tend to stick with the standard medium density settings that the slicer provides. You can play around with a lot with these. They they change like the contact uh, point, the the shape of the um, the the riser, the uh, shape of the raft, and the depth of the raft. What we're looking for though is quite a bit, uh, a large area of um, supported material at least up until sort of midway up. This will allow the part to stick to the build plate quite quite well without having excess weight pulling it away. Um, the bigger the build plate uh, area, because a lot of it is held on through suction, um, the less chance your as your part moves up up and down away from the FEP film that is on the bottom of the vat, that the FEP will hold on to it uh, and, and uh, pull it away from the build plate, causing a failed print. So I'm I can just add a platform here. I'm going to click plus all. Both parts are selected, so it will run through both. And what you see there is you've got a reasonable sized base. The two bases connect as well, which adds some rigidity uh, away from the pole. Um, and that you've got some support going on in there. Now, if I was to uh, pull this down to go through the slicing, you'll find here uh, in particular pull it down a little bit more. Here we've got a part printing in thin air. So that is never going to print. Um, so and we're going to have the same further down uh, on this lower edge. So what I want to do um, is to add more supports in. So I'm already selecting add support here. I will zoom in. I'll pull down to those lower layers and push there and then you'll notice I have a green spot there now that green spot if I click will create a support structure that support structure should enable most of that to be held together however as I've noticed the there's a bit more support on this side and that side. I'm just going to even that out again. 
all supports do is they 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 add a little bit of put bit of post processing time, but not not a stupid amount. So now we're gonna do the same for the upper one. So again, highlighting that this this part is just gonna print in thin air with no support beneath it. So let's again move in. And try and get the additional support as central as possible. What you'll see there is it's joining those supports together, giving it extra rigidity and um, connectivity. And again, I'm going to even up there and there. And that. Uh, should be properly supported now. I uh, just want to zoom in and check the spots it's done. The on the bottom one that's been supported at the uh, bottom edge there properly, and that should be enough to support the entire thing. You'll see we've got some spots in here now. Arguably they're not needed, but they'll also be very easy to remove because you've got some flat surfaces there so uh, the Supporting you want to support all lower edge uh, areas uh, That are easy to identify by pulling down uh, your layer heights And going through and looking for something that appears where there is no support to help it um, no more than that. More complex ships take more time, but the more time you put into this, uh, the better your chances of a successful print will be. Hi guys, uh, so now we're going to look at the print time lapse. Uh, the resin printers are amazing little machines, uh, as you can see. The, uh, the build plate actually recedes down into the resin, uh, it cures a layer. This is just a quick time lapse of those uh, two uh, parts that we went through and sell the supports and everything for. Um, once done, the, the, the parts will lift out of the tray and you'll see slowly edges up. Uh, building more and more layers until eventually you start to see parts appearing out of out of the, the vat. Um, the resins are different, curing times can be different, do research each resin as and when you use it. Uh, but that's it, there's your print time lapse. Next we're going to go into the washing. Washing is really important and now I use an Anycubic Wash and Cure but uh, anything where you're washing your um, your parts in the appropriate material, IPA or water depending upon the resin and agitating the, the resin. There will be a lot of surface resin on those parts uh, that needs cleaning and clearing off so you need to get rid of as much of that as possible uh, uh, before you, you move on to clearing. Now we're going to look at cleaning off the supports, the first stage of this. Uh, make sure that your your parts are dry, so t uh, tissue paper, toilet roll, just dry off some of that IPA or water that you've been cleaning with, um, just to make it easier to handle. Use gloves at all time when handling these parts. Um, and then just take your flush cutters, uh, try and trim flush to the level uh, of the surface that you've gone up against. Remove all the support material. Um, with this example it's easier to, to get some of the spots that are in between the awkward areas but some are a bit more difficult. Um, make sure you've got a nice sharp set of flush cutters and eventually you'll be able to just snap off the supports because you'll have cleared enough and clear through. After this I, I tend to like to do a bit of clean up work um, so either a little bit of sandpaper or in this case all I had to do was uh, to remove some of the, the detritus in, in the middle is just to get a, an old um, 
an old uh, toothbrush and brush it through. Um, you're essentially just trying to clear uh, any of the nubs that are left from the support material or uh, any of the uh, powderized resin. The, the resin does powder a bit when you, when you snip at it to clear it off ready for curing because anything left on there before you cure will prevent the, the UV rays coming in to fully cure this part. So yeah, just, just brushing them off there, that's all that is required with these parts, but uh, different parts need different uh, bits of clearing up. And then lastly, we, we go on to curing it. Um, I've, uh, it's a little bit, uh, I've cut out the middle of this, so I tend to cure it for six minutes in the in a cubic wash and cure. But any UV light source on the 405 nanometer wavelength for, for most of these entry level resin printers, and just make sure you get a good um, a good all round cure that your, your curing isn't in one direction. This will harden the resin uh, and, and just finish off that curing process that you started in the printing and, and, and allow you to, to be able to handle the parts and that your parts will then be strong. This here is ABS like resin so it has some flex to it once finished anyway but some are a lot harder and a lot more brittle. You can get some flexible resin filament, uh, but resin uh, as well. So uh, I just stick it in the air cubic wash and cure, but sunlight or uh, or even uh, a UV lamp, uh, maybe a turntable to keep the, uh, the uh, light rotating around will do. Um, and then uh, pull your part out and you are done. That is resin printing from start to end.